and we're back. So we were talking about the major selling idea approach or the creative strategy approach called uh, brand image. And we looked at some examples of brand image advertising, you know, Levi's, um, various perfume brands, and now the Marlboro brand. And, you know, the question is, what is the image that they're trying to project by using this Marlboro man, you know, the cowboy? And you can think that Marlboro's image is, you know, one of maybe ruggedness, toughness, masculinity, especially the Marlboro red, right? The the full flavor, not light versions. Uh, you know, and this maybe some Americana to it, you know, American image a little bit to it. It's a very well known American brand, one of the most powerful brands in the world, in fact. Uh, so, you know, you can see that brand image advertising uses these kind of symbols, you know, imagery typically with people, you know, um, but not, not necessarily exclusively, but, you know, typically we try to associate it with the type of person that would use it and their, you know, the situations they might find themselves in, which, you know, may not be so logical in the sense, but the symbolism, the feelings that it gives you is what's important. The last approach, which we'll talk about, is called Inherent Drama. And uh, this was championed by Leo Burnett, the, um, in the Chicago School of Advertising. It's known as, and the idea is, to, is that every brand has some drama, you know, inherent means existing within within itself, you know, something that's already there, like Zaten Bishay Var, you know, it's like something's already there. So it's the drama that's inherent in the brand that makes the basis of a story and that that story is dramatic and resonates with the target audience, you know, and it makes them feel a connection to the brand, you know, and that's that this approach, you know, it's finding the inherent drama in your brand. And, you know, that this approach is, is actually probably my favorite of all of them, because I think it, it really captures the idea of what advertising can do. If you, you know, if you really examine a brand and, you know, uh, try to find a way for it to connect with the audience, and form like a you know a bond, if you will, some kind of connection. And that that drama can be, you know, a little bit humorously portrayed, or it can be you know not so humorously portrayed. Uh, for example, just take a look at some of these examples, and I I, I will upload the videos that 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 are going to be shown. I'm not going to show the videos here, but I'll upload the videos on O2 Class so you can see them. Here, for example, is a, an ad for Bic Glue, okay, Bic Bond. Whatever life breaks up, Bic Bond fixes. So you could, you know, look at that, how creative and how clever that is, right? Look at the drama that's there. These two, you know, old friends connected, trying to get back together again. Isn't that awesome? I mean, I love, I love stuff like this. It's so clever and creative, and it really gets the point across, right? Whatever life breaks up, Bic Bond fixes. There's some inherent drama. Here, you can see, like, right, the boa constrictor at the zoo, and the way that they've done this. I mean, it's a really great execution, but sorry, it's a poor image quality. But there's the inherent drama, right? The boa constrictor squeezing something to death. Uh, this is one of my favorite ads of all time. It's for Polaroid. Back before there was, you know, cell phone videos, etc., electronic um, uh, cameras. Um, 
you know, Polaroid was the instant camera. It was like the only camera that you didn't have to develop the film. You could take a picture and instantly, the you know, after like a minute, the, the picture would uh, develop. So they had this ad. Um, basically, I'll, I'll describe it to you. A, uh, you know, a woman comes home from work and she sees the garbage scattered all over the floor. And she yells at the dog, you know, she's like, bad dog, bad dog. And the dog, you know, droops its head. And meanwhile, the cat is like looking on like, <laughs> you know, a little evil uh, jerk of a cat. So um, it turns out then that it's actually the cat that's getting into the garbage, right? And then the dog sees this and happens to snap a picture of the cat in the garbage and then they give the slogan something like you know polaroid see what develops and then the woman's like oh my you know so here the inherent drama in the brand right is the ability to capture images you know that can in this case prove one's innocence right and show the real guilty party and uh, kind of brings out the drama of the brand, the promise. So we'll also talk now, not just about the search for the MSI, um, but advertising appeals and the execution styles that we can use. And again, just think of these as kind of toolbox things, you know, tools to put in your toolbox, your collection of techniques. The advertising appeal is basically you can think of as the hook. You know, what is the hook that lures the consumer in and holds them there? Uh, you know, an appeal is also a noun. You know, you can use it as a verb or a noun. The advertising appeal, you can say, okay, it's a humor appeal, a sex appeal. But also, how do we appeal to the consumers, right? So, um, the execution style is just the particular technical way of, you know, uh, producing the ad or, you know, um, uh, creating the ad, the actual finished product. So, the advertising appeal is the approach used to attract the attention of consumers, you know, to get their attention, but also to get the, the message across and or to influence consumer feelings toward the product or service, like a verb. So you can think of it as like the, the way of getting attention and to hook them into doing something, feeling something, thinking something. The execution style is the way a particular appeal is turned into an advertising message or the approach used to present the message to the, to the audience or the consumer. So we've got rational appeals, and I'll just give you a list of these things, you know, for example, feature appeal is just to focus on the dominant traits of the product. You know, typical, you know, what are the attributes or benefits, just focus on those and call that a feature appeal. And these are rational, rational appeals. Competitive appeals makes comparisons to other brands. Favorable price appeals makes price, the price offer the dominant point. Product or service popularity appeals, stresses the brand's popularity and kind of relies on that um, heuristic, you know, consensus equals correctness, or if everybody's doing it, it must be right. Um, like, more doctors smoke camels than any other cigarette. Can you imagine that this is how cigarettes were advertised once upon a time? News appeals. This is a good one, too, because, you know, news... You're always looking for something to say about your brand, especially if it's an older brand. Everybody knows it. You know, you kind of, kind of, you kind of have to keep the brand alive in people's minds. And how can you do that? Well, you just find ways of making some news or, a, you know, a news appeal announcement about the product. Like, um, I'll give you some examples. Like feature appeal. Here's sunset soap dyes. Really make every dress seem like three or four. So you can just dye the dress, and each time you wear it, it's a different dress, right? Three seasons in one dress with sunset soap dyes. Competitive appeal. There was an ad for iPhone, uh, and it had that 
little thing at the top, that little cutout part, remember in the bezel where the camera was? And uh, in the ad, in the Samsung ad, Samsung made this ad, and uh, at the end of the ad, it was like about iPhone fanboys, if you look at the guy's haircut, right? So it's kind of more, this is actually more of a humor appeal, you could call it, but it's also competitive. The news appeal, introducing the all-new series 2000 tractors. So, you know, when there's something new to say about your brand, then you might as well say it, right? It's a chance to get some interest. You know, news is what, news is interesting, right? And it's the whole point of newspapers. It changes every day, eh? the all-new series 2000 tractors. Well, it's great if you've got something you can really say, like it's all new, but what if you don't? What if it's Tabasco? It's been around for, you know, 100 years. Here it's, well, for our 125th birthday, we'd like to propose a toast, or at least a pizza, some french fries, maybe a few nachos. You know, it's kind of a news appeal. It's their birthday, so let's celebrate, right? That's news. 125th birthday. Uh, so those were rational appeals. There's also emotional appeals that are based on, you know, personal states or feelings. And there's lots and lots and lots and lots of them. You know, I'm not expecting you to memorize all of these, but, you know, just understand that there are lots of different types of emotional appeals. And there's different ways of connecting with people, right, based on these achievement, accomplishment self-actualization or ambition, you know, trying to get ahead, arousal, stimulation, fun, comfort can be an important thing, right? Excitement, fear, fear, remember feed on FUD, remember FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Fear is a very strong appeal. Love, right? Love is a strong appeal. Nostalgia, nostalgia it was a great appeal, although nostalgia isn't what it used to be. That's a joke for all of you. Get that? Anyway, um, safety is a you know kind of like fear appeal, safety and security. So here's one for arousal, stimulation, and fun. It's the Isuzu Rodeo. Now this was in a magazine ad that is actually um, based on the television ad, where the guy is walking through a, a toy store with his little son and the son's being pushed around in, a, in the grocery cart, you know, in the cart. And the guy's looking and the kid's like trying to touch everything and the guy's like, keep your hands in the car, don't touch that, no, you're going to get daddy in trouble. And then he comes to this, you know, Isuzu Rodeo, it looks like it's a toy, but it's, it's huge, it's, you know, full size in a toy box. And all of a sudden the father just goes, you know, ooh. You know, suddenly he's the one that's um, stimulated and finds it, you know, completely captivating. So uh, their tagline, you know, grow up, not old. So it's based on, you know, kind of this, if you buy this brand, you're going to be, you know, stimulated and fun. So that's the whole appeal here is to try to get you to kind of want to have fun. I'm not going to put the... I'm not going to show it now, but I'll put the TVC, the television commercial, on O2 class. Some others, there's lots, right? Acceptance, approval, embarrassment, rejection, status. For here, for example, the uh, the antiperspirant brand, Sure, right? They, for decades, they've been using the same concept. Raise your hand if you're sure. So in a variety of you know, social situations, they show a person who is unsure, right? The person who's not using sure deodorant or antiperspirant, and they've got, you know, maybe sweat stains that are very embarrassing, but the person that's sure raises their hand, right? Raise your hand if you're sure. So they use this kind of embarrassment, which is kind of like a fear appeal, if you know, you know, for that confident, dry, secure feeling, raise your hand and reach for sure. So this brings us now to the ad execution techniques. Um, but before I start a new segment, I'm running out of time. I've got about you know 20 seconds left. I hope you're all uh, able to follow along, and you know I'm not going too fast or too slow. It's clear. It's not too boring. 
I hope so. Anyway, I'll be back with the next segment in a few seconds. Thank you.